Have you heard of the butterfly effect? That's basically what's going on here. I don't mean the terrible movie from 2004, I mean the concept and chaos theory about the interdependence of things in which a small change can have a massive effect on the future. And if there was no stronger, things would look very different today. The name comes from the paper by Edward Lorenz from 1972 titled Predictability, Does the Flap of a Butterfly's Wings in Brazil Set Off a Tornado in Texas? He's the butterfly to hip hop's tornado. That title pretty much sums up the concept. A small, minute change can have a drastic effect down the line in a completely different area. This album's a big deal. Well, today I'm applying this concept to hip hop, to Kanye's graduation, and diving into three classic songs to show you that they're all secretly connected. And if it wasn't for this late 70s experimental musician you've probably never heard of, these songs wouldn't exist, Kanye's graduation would never exist, and music today would look a lot different. No, wait, what? To start, I'm gonna give you all the endpoints up front, but you won't know how they connect. Then I'll get out my red yarn like a madman and make so many connections, your mind will be blown. But it really is real, and it's really good, or I might just look crazy. Either way, it's gonna be a good time. We'll start with De La Soul's first album, then connect it to a tribe called Quest's first album, before finally connecting to Kanye's third album, Graduation, by way of a different genre of music entirely. Each of these albums are incredible classics and influential in their own right, but there's one common thread, or red yarn, that we'll see emerge. And without this one guy, music today would look very different. Turn a party. De La Soul's debut album, Three Feet High and Rising, was released in 1989, and it was a critical and commercial success. The album went number one, is a platinum-selling record, was selected by the Library of Congress to be included in the National Recording Registry, and is incredibly influential, being dubbed by the Village Voice as the Sgt. Pepper of hip-hop. This album's a big deal. This album includes samples from a wide range of artists, including Johnny Cash, Hall & Oates, Steely Dan, Edwin Birdsong, The Turtles, and more. You might be thinking, hold up. Who's Edwin Birdsong? That doesn't sound real. Oh man, some of that old Ronnie Snake Hiss stuff is so classic. We should sample that. That's you right now, man. That's what you sound like. Well, I'm here to tell you that Edwin Birdsong is a very real man and He's the key to this whole thing. He's the butterfly to hip hop's tornado, so to speak. Three Feet High and Rising is the beginning of several new things. It's credited as the beginning of 90s alternative hip hop, which is a reaction to much harder stuff that was mainstream at the time. That means it paved the way for A Tribe Called Quest in their debut album that we're going to talk about in a moment. So let's just start with one piece of red yarn for that. It's also credited with introducing the hip hop skit, the comedic interlude between songs on an album, which, break out the red yarn again, skits are also included on Kanye's first two albums. The biggest single from Three Feet High and Rising and their biggest single ever was Me, Myself, and I. This song samples several different songs. The most recognizable one is Not Just Knee Deep by Funkadelic in 1979, but layered underneath that is a drum sample from our guy, Edwin Birdsong. The song is Rapper Dapper Snapper from 1981, and this provides the main drum groove for this song. Look, I know Rapper Dapper Snapper by Edwin Birdsong sounds about as real as Ribbity Rap Tastic by Ronnie Snake Hiss, but it really is real, and it's really good. It's so good, in fact, that DJ Premier sampled it for the 2003 Gangstar song Skills. That's not one of the main parts of this video, but should we just send some red yarn, like, that way? Edwin Birdsong was tied into the hip-hop scene from the very beginning, and when it came to writing Rapper Dapper Snapper, he had some direct inspiration. I went to the disco fever in the Bronx a lot and listened to DJs like Grandmaster Flash. I've always been a student of music and would take notes of what's going on. Not only that, he was friends with Marley Marl and he was the first DJ to play Rapper Dapper Snapper in public. Okay, so already we've got our man Edwin Birdsong and his track from 81 called Rapper Dapper Snapper. This is tied closely in with early hip hop history, provides the drums for De La Soul's hit Me, Myself, and I, which in turn paves the way musically for A Tribe Called Quest, which we're about to talk about, as well as Kanye, who's influenced by their style, tribe style, and the album skits too. Oh, and bonus, DJ Premier, one of the best DJs and producers ever, also sampled this Edwin Birdsong song. It's Ed, Ed Birdsong song? There's gotta be a better way to say that. Edwin, Edwin Birdsong song. Edwin Birdsong track? This song by Edwin Birdsong? I'll fix it in the edit. So if you take out the Edwin Birdsong drums, Me, Myself, and I isn't the same. That affects Tribe, that affects Kanye, and that throws the whole future off. Now let's move to the next phase, A Tribe Called Quest. Can I get some more yarn? A Tribe Called Quest and De La Soul kinda go hand in hand. They were both in the Native Tongues Collective together, Q-Tip was featured on a song on Three Feet High and Rising, and they both sound musically similar, incorporating more jazz and avant-garde samples into their music. The first single that A Tribe Called Quest released was Description of a Fool in 1989, followed by their first album the following year, People's Instinctive Travels and the Paths of Rhythm. This album is another breakthrough classic. The Source gave it a 5 mic rating, the first album to get that award. It was a critical and commercial success, with NME stating, this is not rap, this is near perfection. The first single that started it all, Description of a Fool, does not contain an Edwin Birdsong sample. You know what? Actually, 
I'm probably good. But hold on. The primary sample on this song is the Roy Ayers Ubiquity song, Running Away, from 1977. But who co-produced this song with Roy Ayers on this album? Our guy Edwin. That's right, Edwin Birdsong not only had solo albums, but he also collaborated with other incredible musicians like Roy Ayers. In an interview, Edwin recalled his influence on Roy, stating, I think my main influence on Roy at that time was getting him to move from being a purely jazz musician to become more bluesy and commercial. Ayers and Birdsong worked together on several Ubiquity albums and even produced other groups like Ramp, whose song Daylight is the primary sample on another Tribe song from their debut album, Bonita Applebaum. Just to use up even more red yarn, that same group, Ramp, which again is produced by Edwin Birdsong and Roy Ayers, had the song American Promise, which was reworked in 2007 by Erica Badu as American Promise. But now we're getting into Soulquarian's territory, and I don't have enough red yarn to jump between videos, so here's the link for the story of that music scene. So much red yarn. Just to recap where we're at so far. Edwin Birdsong was inspired by Grandmaster Flash, Marley Marl was the first DJ to play Rapper Dapper Snapper, which was then sampled by De La Soul in their classic album, Me, Myself, and I, but also our guy is collaborating with Roy Ayers on music that is then being sampled by A Tribe Called Quest multiple times, and even Erica Badu. This is a lot of red yarn, and we haven't even gotten to Kanye yet. And then there was Kanye. His first two albums, The College Dropout and Late Registration, feature his signature chipmunk soul sound where he'd take a sample of a soul song and pitch it up, making the voice sound like a chipmunk. Both of these albums are classics, but Kanye was looking to do something new. Kanye was reportedly aimlessly making songs and had no clear direction in mind. Then, as Kanye's tour DJ at the time, A-Track, has explained, Kanye heard the Busta Rhymes song Touch It, in which producer Swizz Beats sampled the Daft Punk song Technologic. Kanye liked it, but had never heard of Daft Punk. A-Track was shocked, so he sat him down to play him more Daft Punk. He explains, And when I played him harder, better, faster, stronger, he was like, That's so dope. Play it again. I'm gonna sample that. And I said, no, wait, what? I guess I still had a 90s mentality in terms of sampling, where you're supposed to find unknown records to use, the way the Q-tip or the Beat Nuts would dig up something that nobody knew before. Long story short, Kanye sampled Daft Punk's song Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger for his song Stronger, which was his third number one hit, and this new electronic synth-heavy sound gave the rest of the album a new direction, launching a new phase of Kanye's career. Sorry, how does the bird guy play into this? But before Kanye sampled Daft Punk, Daft Punk sampled our boy Edwin the bird song himself. So instead of sampling a song directly, Kanye is now sampling a song that samples another song. Instead of chipmunk soul, I guess it's like robot soul. In 1979, Edwin Birdsong released the song Cola Bottle Baby, which Daft Punk sampled for the groove of Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger in 2001, which Kanye then sampled for Stronger in 2007. Without the Daft Punk song, there's no Stronger, but without my man Edwin, there's no Daft Punk song. This is like double red yarn. It's about to be thick. Not only that, but you've got Tribe and De La Soul's influence on Kanye, which would look different without Edwin influencing them. And if there was no Stronger, things would look very different today. Stronger influenced the overall sound of Graduation, making it much more electronic and synth-heavy. This marked a new direction for Kanye and a new direction for hip-hop. Kanye's Graduation and 50 Cent's album Curtis were released the same day, September 11th, 2007, pitting the albums against each other. 50 Cent said that if Kanye's album sold more copies than his, he would stop releasing solo albums. Well, when Graduation won, 50 changed his mind, but regardless, this marked a new direction for hip-hop away from gangster rap. This started a new era for Kanye, for hip-hop, for Daft Punk, and inspired many artists to incorporate house and electronic elements in their music. Kanye is standing on the shoulders of giants, and a lot of other people are standing on his shoulders too. And it's all because of the bird song. Did I find a window? You know the scene of Back to the Future where Marty's playing guitar at the dance, but his parents haven't gotten back together on the dance floor yet, so he's looking at a picture of his siblings, and they're completely gone, and then he looks at his hand and it starts disappearing? That's basically what's going on here. Kanye is Marty, a tribe called Quest and De La Soul are the older siblings, and Edwin and Birdsong are the parents who fell in love and started it all. If you took out Edwin Birdsong from music history, you'd have No Me, Myself, and I by De La Soul, or at least a very different one. That affects a tribe called Quest directly and indirectly. I mean, they're part of the same scene, but in two of the significant songs, they sample two different Roy Ayers Ubiquity songs that Edwin helped produce. So Tribe is different, and then you've got Kanye with his early albums gets an influence from Tribe and De La Soul, as well as his sampling of Daft Punk's sampling of Edwin Birdsong song, which in turn, the song Stronger and the album Graduation changed the course of music history. Not to mention, we've also got Gangstar, Grandmaster Flash, Marley Marl, and Erica Badu in the mix. Forget Birdsong, my guy Edwin is the butterfly wing that has affected the tornado of hip hop, and by extension, everything for the past 40 or 50 years. For more videos, check out the rest of my channel. And hey, drop a comment and say what's up. If you want to keep diving deep on Kanye, I'll drop a link in the description of my video all about his most important song, Through the Wire. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.
If you won a songwriting competition, would it be the winning Edwin Birdsong song? Get the tape off. Or would it be Edwin Birdsong's winning song? This is so <laughs> De La Soul's debut. I want to say De La Soul's De La Bue, but the, if you've written out, that's not going to work. That's going to say De La Soul's De La Butt. <laughs> 